Now we get to Rituatide. This one is still in clinical trials and they've added a glucagon agonist onto this. And it's funny because what we were talking about earlier, glucagon is what's going up when you're fasted. So what's weird about this is you're injecting yourself with a drug that tells your body that I am both fasted and I'm both fed. So you use the GLP-1, which is funny because you don't have any food in you. Like, let's just say you're fasting, you use the GLP-1, you tell your body, oh, I have food. But then your body's going to be like, all right, I don't see the blood sugar. Why is our blood sugar not rising? And glucagon will step in there because glucagon is a hormone that when you're fasted, it raises your blood sugar. It basically breaks down glycogen and then you get gluconeogenesis, which is the process by which your body takes stored glycogen and turns it into glucose, which is in your liver and in your muscle. And it raises your blood sugar levels, which is what you need because your blood sugar can be too low when taking these things. You want to go into the body and bring that out. And that's the same thing glucagon also works on. It triggers lipolysis, which is where your, your body takes a triglyceride, right? Try three fatty acids with a glycerol backbone, goes in there, rips that thing apart, and then you can send the fats into fatty acid oxidation. And so you start burning fat for energy. So super promising. Glucagon is great. It's funny because when I first heard about GLP-1s, I was super confused because of that. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. It would make more sense if we were doing a glucagon agnet. And so, yeah, it only took like five or 10 years, which Gordy God for those people doing the research, not ripping on them. But with glucagon, we'll talk about, there's still like some things we don't really know. We already chatted, right, about its, its benefits versus the GLP-1s is that it's basically going to go into your fat and tear your fat down. It's going to go in your glycogen and, and rip your glycogen out, turn it into glucose. And this is what we want long-term, right? We want to burn fat. So it can probably help with like non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And there are some stuff specifically in younger kids. If you inject too much insulin, like anyone knows, any bodybuilder out there, if you're using insulin for anabolic effects, like you can die. You can inject yourself with insulin and you drop your blood sugar and you can die. Pretty sure most people watching this know that. Maybe not. So you have to be eating something, right? Like I had the story, I remember I had this bodybuilder that I knew he injected himself with insulin and he went to his locker to get out his food. And for whatever reason, they had locked his locker and he's like trying to rip these like, oh, I need that food now. And he like, he basically told me he smashed the locker in to get his sandwich out because he was afraid he was going to die. So insulin is very dangerous if you didn't know that. And it can be used responsibly. There are people out there like, oh, I use it all the time. Yeah, but don't be a dummy and inject a huge amount. Like people who don't know anything about it, like stay away. But yeah, glucagon, great for, you know, raising your accessing fat for energy. Now, one thing that they are finding out, it does seem like it is increasing heart rate because specifically your heart has glucagon receptors on it. And usually what you can do, you have alpha and beta adrenergic receptors that you can manipulate. Like, right, a lot of people take a beta blocker if their heart rate's too high, if their blood pressure's too high. And so just one slight thing out there for all you biochem or physiology nerds is it seems like even if you block the adrenergic receptors in the heart, glucagon is still able to keep the heart rate up. So may not be good long-term if you have a higher cardio, just like a higher resting heart rate because of this. You're going to get the other things we chatted about, GI distress. I talked about the hyperglycemia. So actually, you could also raise your blood sugar too high using glucagon, right? You, if you shot too much glucagon in you, the exact opposite of insulin, you are basically going in and tearing your fat down and releasing all your glucose and you raise your blood sugar too high, which is also a bad thing. And you can also get ketoacidosis. Redditrutide, like we said, it's still in clinical trials. We don't know a ton about it. it. seems super promising. Again, starting dose, you're looking at a 0.5 milligrams. Again, I would start lower if you're using it, probably at 0.25. And then you try titrate up, and there are people going as high as 12 milligrams in some of the trials. Adrenal tumor can release dangerous levels of stress hormones. So not good. Basically sends you into like a fight or flight response. So definitely want to stay away from that. So if you have a pheochromocytoma, Glucagon screening tumors, which would be really rare. I mean, you could have one. And then I think some of these have, they have lactose in them. So if you're lactose intolerant, you want to stay away. All right, dealing with side effects. We've already chatted about the gut stuff, but what do you do? Like, again, I'm just going to bring up the part about losing muscle mass, right? We have liraglutide over there, 35 to 45% loss in muscle. So if you lose 10 pounds, you're looking at like four pounds of muscle mass. Simaglutide, same thing. Trisipatide is way lower. I'm assuming. Redditrutide is going to be better. This is just what I got from Rock. They definitely are getting better as we go, but you should be mindful of that. There are plenty of people who have used these inosyl, not lost muscle mass. They've gone in the opposite direction. You know, if they're on TRT, if they're taking anabolics. So do the basics. Make sure you're getting a gram per pound of body weight of protein. You should be counting your macros and calories. 
and test your thyroid, test your testosterone, make sure that they're optimized. And then you also want to ensure that you're lifting weights. Tell your body, hey, I'm going to lift weights. I want to build more muscle. That's going to help you preserve more muscle in the long term. GI side effects wise, everyone kind of goes about this at a different angle. Most often, if you're having the GI side effects, you can just turn your dose down. Most often, that's usually what you want to do. But then it's like, well, it's like I have to be nauseous in order to not eat. Well, then I don't know what to tell you. Drinking more water is helpful. Make sure that you're getting electrolytes. You, you know, lemon water is great. You can do a little bit of apple cider vinegar too, which technically increase in acidity may speed up motility, but you know, kind of pick what angle you want to go at. Herb wise, I really like ginger, but it's funny because like we're saying, it speeds up emptying, it increases your motility. So you're kind of defeating the purpose of the drug. But if, it, if you maybe just need to take a little bit, not a bad idea. Peppermints also helps with GI issues. And then in licorice, there's an active constituent DGL that's also helpful. And like the DGL, you can get in these like little wafer stuff. Like you can get a lot of these in candies, which I prefer versus taking a capsule personally. B6 is a popular one for nausea, right? A lot of times in pregnancy, people are using that. It's not really has a whole lot of evidence in GLP-1s, but a little bit of extra B6 is probably not going to hurt you. Worst case scenario, then you end up going with some medications like a Zofram, a Dramamine, Hydroxanine, Bonine. I really don't want to use those. I don't, you know, like an antihistamine is going to make you feel tired most often, but you know, you do you. All right, that's it. We kind of chatted about everything, you know, the differences, the labs, the differences between GLP-1s, the GIP and the glucagons. That's all folks. Hey, if you've used these and if you have some constructive feedback, I think a lot of these are pretty new. And people are still trying to figure out how to use them dosing wise and what to mix them with. Like I didn't talk a lot about that today. And my guys, we're really going to be putting them on these after their testosterone is optimized. Most of them are on TRT. So they're not going to get a whole lot of loss of muscle mass. They're still going to be able to work out. I, my two cents, you know, adding that, I know people will be using anabolics with them and whatnot. And if you found this topic interesting, I think you'd like this other video that I did. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time, stay vigilant, my friends, and God bless.